What a glorious time of year this is. It's a time to celebrate family. It's a time to celebrate love. It's a time to celebrate Christmas. It's not a good time to go to the shops though. It's one of the mistakes I often make that I forgot to buy somebody a gift and then at the last moment I go and stand in those long queues. But anyway, it's such a glorious time. Unfortunately, some Christians build up a lot of tension around this time. How should we navigate with how Christmas has been commercialized? And what does the Bible say? What is the correct approach? What could be the correct content to fill this time of the year and know, you know, that we're doing the right thing, that we truly honor the Lord Jesus Christ? There are so many questions and so many comments, and one of them starts with the fact that we do not believe that Jesus was born uh, around the 25th of December. All indications are that he probably was born rather in the month of September. But what we do as Christians is that we dedicate this time of the year to celebrate his birth. Now, uh, just, just for interest's sake, I was born on the 27th of December, and I mean, you can imagine, that's not a good time to throw a party of any sorts. Everybody is worn out with all of the year-end functions and with their Christmas parties and so on. So I also had to learn to move my birthday to another date and to accommodate some of the rhythms of life. Shall we talk through this? And I would like to share a personal conviction of how I and how my family approach this time of the year. So those um, tensions in regards to is it the correct time to celebrate the birth of Jesus? We'll talk about those. There are other tensions uh, relating to some of the symbols that have become popular around the Christmas season. And people feel, you know, maybe some of those symbols have their origin in pagan worship. And it's actually a very dangerous thing to do to celebrate Christmas as the world celebrates Christmas today. So I'd like to address some of those today and give you some wisdom on how I think the New Testament helps us and guides us to celebrate Christmas in such a way that it really honors the Lord Jesus Christ. I do want to start by stating that I do celebrate Christmas in December. And I think it is quite important that we start with the whole premise of the New Testament, that Jesus Christ is alive and he's part of our lives on a daily basis. Practically, practically, emotionally, spiritually, there's absolutely no difference between 25 December and 26 December. As far as my experience of the Lord Jesus Christ is concerned, He is Lord of my life on a daily basis. As a Christian who is filled with Christ and who has become the temple of the Holy Spirit, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, as a Christian filled with the presence of God, there is also no difference between a Sunday and a Monday. The fact that we dedicate a Sunday as Christians towards coming together as the body of Christ, worshiping the Lord, loving His presence, coming together as spiritual family, that heightens our awareness of God's presence maybe on a Sunday. But in my walk with God, He is part of every minute of every hour, everywhere I go, Jesus is in me and he is with me. So Christmas to me is not a special day in terms of God's presence. It is a special day, the 25th of December, as our Christian fathers have decided decades, thousands of years ago, they decided that they want to call a feast. They want to call a time of celebration around the 25th of December. Now, every feast actually just emphasizes a particular truth. And if you understand it in that way, Christmas could have been on any other date. It is a time in the year that we choose, globally, as a Christian body. It is a time that we choose to celebrate the birth 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. His incarnation and the fact that God became man. Those are some of the huge themes in Christianity as we understand the sacrifice that our God made to put himself in our shoes. And we want to celebrate that. It has changed the course of history. And I want you to think deeply about the fact that this feast doesn't have to be on the right date, the day that Jesus was born. It is just the day that we set apart to celebrate the fact that our God became flesh. He walked amongst us. And we'll look at one or two of those scriptures in a minute. So if we then understand that Christianity has forever taken this principle that God put on humanity. He put on the culture of the Hebrew people of the day. If we understand that principle, then you will understand that Christianity has for ages also taken meaning to certain normal cultural elements in society. Let me just give you one or two examples as I read John chapter 1 verse 14 that says, The word became flesh and blood and moved into our neighborhood. This is the message translation. The word became flesh and blood and moved into our neighborhood. That means that God clothed himself with our culture, with our humanity, and he brought new meaning to our humanity and to our culture. If we continue with that scripture in the message translation, John chapter 1 verse 14, it says, We saw the glory of this God with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory like father, like son, generous inside and out, and true from start to finish. Now, one of the clear examples of how Christianity has taken on certain cultural elements is just in the way that we name our days. I mean, we talk about Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday without really thinking what we are saying. Sunday was the day that was dedicated to the worship of the sun god. Thursday was dedicated, Saturday to Saturnus, you know, to all of the gods in the Greek Roman uh, uh, history and how people related to spirituality at that point. And as Christians, we take the Sunday and we dedicate, we give new meaning to a day where other people used to worship the sun god. We decided that we are going to worship the Son of God. He is the Son of Righteousness, according to Malachi. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And you see how the incarnation of Jesus Christ is something that Christianity has been playing out into our cultural reference forever. It's true also for just the clothes that we wear. If you engage a Christian in India or a Christian in the USA or Australia or South Africa or somewhere in, 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 in Central Africa, you will see that people still dress themselves within their natural culture. But the life of Jesus Christ comes and he transforms the way that we do life, the way that we do marriage, the way that we do business and all of those different elements. I'm just stating that Christianity is about the Lord Jesus Christ becoming flesh. And it is true that there were pagans who um, around the 22nd and the 23rd of December, when the sun turns in the northern hemisphere and when the winter stops and actually the new season is announced, there were some pagan rituals. And it is true that the church fathers of the day said this is the season where we want to celebrate the new life that God brought to our planet.
But the fact that that is in proximity, that it is close to each other, doesn't bother me at all. Because then it would have to bother me that we have our church meetings on a Sunday. There are just too many elements of what the enemy is doing that if I had to take notice of that, I wouldn't have the freedom that I have received in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to state it very clearly. I celebrate Christmas around December, around the 25th of December, and I'm going to give you one or two of the dimensions of how I do it. But I am not a slave to some of the fear that drives people to say, now I'm not going to touch any of the elements of Christmas. Because I understand that Jesus became flesh. He took on our humanity. He took on our culture. And he redeemed it. And I think Christianity is about redeeming people, redeeming their culture, redeeming moments like this one, where the whole world is feasting and celebrating relationships and celebrating with gifts and so on. So there are some of the symbols in this time around Christmas that if we could take the meaning that Christ brings to our lives, and take it to those symbols. I think it could liberate us. It could set us free so that we could celebrate Christmas. But do it for the right reasons. And with the right meaning behind those reasons. So maybe, maybe some of the tension that you may experience is between the what and the how. The what is we want to celebrate the birth of Christ. The how could have some elements to it where I say, okay, yes, I, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. But this is the way that we do celebrate Christmas. Now, I, I want to state it like this. I don't think that the devil is necessarily in the symbols behind Christmas. I think that some of those symbols, let's start, for instance, with St. Nicholas. He was a Christian leader who around this time just reached out to some poor children. And people were so inspired by it that we have some of the leftovers of what he used to do in what is today known as Father Christmas. And I do agree that some pagan elements came into this whole symbol and the concept of if you were a good child, you're going to get a gift. And if you were bad, you're not going to get a gift. That is absolutely unbiblical. So there are some of those dimensions that we can cut out. But the concept of buying gifts around this time, celebrating family, appreciating somebody, that particular notion doesn't have anything evil behind it. We take meaning to that. So I actually promote this. I tell people this is a fantastic time of the year. To celebrate the people who are close to you. You know, one of the biggest challenges of the church is that we sometimes believe that God only works and God actually lives in holy spaces and in holy places. That we experience God when we go to certain holy meetings in certain cathedrals and places like that. While I think that there is something special about a building that's got great acoustics and that's got brilliant architecture, I do not think that that actually differs from a beautiful uh, marula tree out in the bush felt or that differs from a rock by the sea where you're sitting and enjoying the scenery. And the sense of the presence of God is not connected to a place. Christmas is actually one of those stunning seasons in the year where we take the Lord Jesus home with us. It's the music that plays um, in the shops in our homes that elevates the awareness that he became flesh and he is with us. It's the conversations. It's the extra moments where we gather with our family. We light candles. And some people say you can't light candles because that... That relates back to some of the traditions of the pagans when they worship the sun that is turning around. And I'm saying, where do you get that? Where do you, when, when ever did pagan worshippers, did they own candlelight? 
we take meaning to these moments. If you have a if you have a special lunch or a dinner with your family and you're using candles, you're using music, uh, even if you want to use incense, we don't we don't like that. But if you want to do that, we take meaning to natural cultural elements of society and what we cannot afford to miss is that the meaning of christ who became flesh he dwelt amongst us that we celebrate that in our homes we don't have to do that in cathedrals we take christ home with us in this time of christmas and that's why i like celebrating christmas with my family and with my friends Let's look at Colossians 1.15 again. It says, we look at this Son, the Son of God, and we see the God who cannot be seen. Christmas to me is a time where His presence is just put on display. It's made visible with the love that people have for one another. Just the tolerance, the fact that we celebrate the uniqueness, that we take care of each other, that we love each other. This God that cannot be seen is put on display. The fact that we that we look out for people who are stuck in poverty and are struggling and we are caring for them. All of those elements. We look at the sun, Colossians 1.15, and we see the God who cannot be seen. We look at the sun and we see God's original purpose in everything that was created. Everything on this planet is a gift from the living God. That includes lights and, uh, light and candles. It includes the sunrise. It includes the summer in South Africa and the Southern Hemisphere. Christmas for us is a glorious time of warmth in so many ways. It's so spacious is he, Colossians 1.19. So roomy that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Come on, I want to challenge you. It's Christmas time. Let us celebrate Christ. The word Christmas comes from Christ Mass. It was a time where our church fathers decades, thousands of years ago said this is a time where we will break bread together and we will celebrate the fact that Christ is in us and he is amongst us. So people ask me, John, do you put up a tree, a Christmas tree? Because that is one of the demonic elements. And I'm again saying, you know, everything on this planet is a gift from God. I do put up a tree. The early church fathers decided that the tree with its triangular shape would represent something of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, and, and again, we don't have to bring that kind of meaning to that symbol. But the tree for me symbolizes life. It symbolizes the gift of what God gave us on this planet. And we do put some gifts around the tree and we have that moment as a family where, the, where we open them and we celebrate the love that we received in the first place from our Heavenly Father. I like to put up lights and we, we do Christmas pudding and all of those elements. It's a family celebration. And I want to encourage you to do that. The problem for me is when we do not celebrate Jesus Christ anymore. And that I agree with. I see so much happening in society, so much happening in our culture, where people spend so much money that the reason for Christmas, the concept of a giving, generous Father, that that reason sometimes gets lost. That's why I say celebrate Christ in this season. Celebrate the gift of God. Celebrate the gift of the people around you and flood it with meaning for you and for your family. It doesn't actually matter how you do it, the what is more important. I think the second thing that we do every year around this time is not just to take care of our own, but to look up a little bit around us and see people around us who really suffer at this time. You know, if, so, if you lost a loved one in this last year, Christmas is a very tough time for you. So just look up a little bit and maybe see if there's somebody in your community, somebody in your proximity that's really going through a tough time. This is the best time of the year just to be generous to them as well. As a church community, we always do a Christmas 
wish list. We love to reach out to people. You know, all the people and orphans and people who are just suffering. People who are just lonely at this time of year. Unfortunately, it's also true that, that a lot of people do not feel that they have hope for the future. And this is a time for the church to shine in our communities. Everybody in the Southern Hemisphere is on holiday and is celebrating just a time of rest. Flooded with Christ-like meaning. And say thank you Lord that you are the gift giver. And that we have the opportunity to do the same for one another. The last component of what I think we should do in this time. The Christmas time is a fantastic time to tell stories. Just to read the story of the birth of Jesus inspires emotion about his love for humanity. To tell your own story to your children. This is a season where we have a lot of time around dinner tables, lunch tables, breakfast tables, where we have family time at an increased level. It is a time to tell stories. Where do we come from? What are the values that God has laid um, uh, on our hearts, that God has established in our lives over seasons? It is a time to bring our children to a place where we celebrate what is really important. It is a time to infuse hope. And the story of Christ, the story of my life, the story of December <laughs> is a story of hope. I want to pray that you will go back. In these couple of days that are left and flooded with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is such a good time to also just look forward to the year that is coming. And to say Lord thank you that you became flesh. So that every day of my life can be Christmas day. Let's celebrate Jesus. He is Emmanuel. God is with us. Music